Hey guys, welcome back to JJL Collectibles with Jackie and Jason. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss a video of ours. I'm usually behind the camera, but today I'm making an appearance. We're doing a different style of video today, so please go ahead and comment down below. Let us know how you feel about it. We're actually in Boston, Massachusetts this weekend, which is my hometown. We're visiting family and we thought it would be kind of fun to do a different style of video for you guys what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit up as many comic book stores as we can and show you guys what we get from them and you might be asking you know what do, what do we look for when we go to these stores obviously we look for keys we look for good books but i really look for customer service i've been in the customer service field for over 20 years so i like to see you know who's going to engage who's going to tell me about a new book that's how I learned about Weatherman, about Tom King, about so many different writers and artists because of the actual people that work at the stores. So I look at that as well. So yeah, have fun with us. The first store we visited was Omar's World of Comics. One of the coolest pickups was this Snow Angels Volume 1 by Jeff Lemire and by Jock. It's pretty much a future dystopia type of book. But one of the coolest things that I noticed was it had a book plate inside signed by Jeff Lemire and signed by Jock. So awesome cover. The next one was the Marvel Quarterly Report. I did a little research on this. This was actually something that began, it was a new quarterly that began in September of 1991. And it pretty much has Spider-Man and the Hulk explaining the stock, in, at the stock exchange, the quarterly profits of Marvel. So it's actually a really rare book to find. So I thought it was cool that I found it over there. Then you got Fantastic Four, 371. This is an embossed cover, second printing of 371, because the first printing, if anyone remembers, it's actually an all white cover. It's a white embossed cover. So it's a dope cover with the human torch on it. The next was the, I found these two Marvel quarterly books and I just thought they were beautiful. They're acetate covers. And what's dope about this is these, this is pretty much the Marvel universe through the eyes of a photojournalist and kind of documents, you know, when Doom came and Galactus came and Spider-Man came into the world. So it's kind of like a realistic approach to the Marvel Universe. The next one was an awesome store called Counterplay. And in there, again, you're going to see a mix of new and a, and a mix of old here. That's why I kind of like to bring to all of our subscribers, our, our customers, just to kind of understand how diverse we can be. So Spider-Man number four, really awesome cover I saw, and I just thought it was dope that it says Spider-Man and Spider-Man. If you're reading this, the <laughs> last few pages show a first appearance or a new Spider-Man that kind of shows up from a different universe, but it's kind of cool. So hopefully y'all read this, or if not, we'll review it and we'll talk about it. I saw this, I feel sick. It just looks so cool, the cover, a book about a girl. <laughs> but one of the cool things was it actually has two issues in it in one. So I had to pick it up. Maybe I'll read this and we'll talk a little bit about it. Another really dope pickup was Iron Man number three. Literally a, a classic story where, this from 1968, and I just thought it was dope that I got to pick it up. But one thing that's really cool is there's actually a letter from future Thor writer, famous writer for Thor, Walt Simonson. So I just thought it was really dope to have a piece of history. What, 68? And he is literally having over 40 years worth, or 40 year old comic book in my hand. I thought it was dope. The next one was Deathstroke 58. The cover was just awesome. You know, I love the Joker. And it's written by Marv Wolfman. And it's a Deathstroke versus Joker story. And it's a really rare book that I looked it up. So I just thought it was a dope cover. Yeah. Here you'll see Spider-Man 1. Obviously, one of the most iconic covers. It's I mean, there's variants right now that are copying or, or homaging this cover. This is when Todd McFarlane was given full reign, art and story for Spider-Man back in 1990. This is Batman 13, Death of the Family. I've probably spoken to a lot of customers about this uh, by Scott Snyder, Capullo, Glapion. Pretty much the Joker's just tired of Batman kind of not taking him seriously and says, I'm going to kill the whole family. Yeah, yeah I got to read this. Batman Futures End. I just love these lenticular covers as cheesy as they may be. And this is pretty much, again, a story by Scott Snyder. And this is five years into the future of the New 52, if you know or remember the New 52. Some people have some mixed feelings about that. So this is a really cool book. What you'll see here, and for those that have watched the Marvel movies as well, this is really big. This is Silver Surfer number 34 from 1987. It's an Infinity Gauntlet prelude called The Rebirth of Thanos. And it's, it's his first appearance since 1974. He was actually defeated 
in a Marvel 2-in-1 annual number two by the Avengers. And 13 years later, Thanos shows up. And this is kind of when Thanos really starts to get big and obviously probably why they chose him as one of the biggest villains in the movies. This is Amazing Spider-Man 347, a David Michelini story, Eric Larson on the cover, obviously known for his Savage Dragon run. It's important because it shows the early battles between him and Spider-Man before we get his own series in 1993, obviously called Lethal Protector, which a lot of people know about that. It's a dope cover too, very Shakespearean. Uh, Invincible number one, the Amazon Prime. I was lucky enough to find a cool copy of this. And then we have here Art Brute. This is a reprint of the first work of W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo of Ice Cream Man fame. This was originally published under the name The Electric Sublime. It's pretty much like a chic art piece. It's really dope. This guy right here is just trying to figure out what's going on with paintings across the world that are getting damaged and vandalized and stuff like that. This pickup here is from Comically Speaking. I picked up some really dope stuff here. So here you have Black Panther. This is the second series of Black Panther, number one. And this is pretty much the Black Panther coming to New York. Thinking about putting this in CGC. Uh, Christopher Priest story, Mark's Texiera cover. And it's just, it's dope. Hard to find as well. One thing I loved about Comically Speaking was the guy behind the counter kind of explained to me this issue, so I had to buy it again. So I bought this over, I think it was Counterplay, so I bought it again at Comically Speaking. And then I've been on this big trip about La Araña. This is pretty much the Mexican and Puerto Rican Spider-Woman or Spider-Girl. I had to have this cover. This is the Edge of Spider-Verse uh, 1B variant. Just thought it was a dope cover and I've been collecting a lot of her stuff. Ask me about her, I'll tell you about her. And then also we got these dope pops. Obviously, as you see on the Instagram, I'm a big Joker fan. So I got this Joker deceased pin pop and then I got this regular Joker in the dope black suit. We visited my boys, the Amaya brothers. Uh, check them out. They got some really great cards. They're really big into sports. Picked up these dope pickups as well. What you'll find here is Joker number two from July 1975 when the, jo when the Joker got his first series. And to think 30, 40 years later, we're on his third series finally. You would think we'd be on his eighth or ninth series with the Joker. Then you have the World's Finest 177 written by the great Jim Shooter. This is where Lex Luthor and the Joker trick Leonardo da Vinci into planning crimes. The stories they came up with back in those days, right? <laughs> and then Werewolf by Night, number 19. This is uh, back in 1974. And I actually saw the Marvel value stamp for one of the first times. I actually opened it up and check it out. Ask me about it. It's pretty cool. And then we stopped by this dope 99 cents bookstore. And they had some really cool books. So Ascani's Son, which is a dystopian uh, future about young Cable, which obviously is Cyclops and Jean Grey's son. The Wake, a really dope Snyder and Murphy story. Prophet, Rob Liefeld, obviously. Shadowhawk, Jim Valentino of Image Fame. A lot of cool Wildcat stuff. And obviously Wildcats have become part of DC continuity. So these books are gonna be probably really big in the future. More Wake stuff. I gotta tell you about that story. Found a Deadly Class book in there. More Wildcat stuff. Youngblood, a la uh, Rob Lifo. Team Youngblood stuff. You'll see these at a Comic-Con near you in, in our $2 bins. More Wildcat stuff. Wildcats trilogy. I found a Chrononauts by Mil uh, Mark Miller and Sean Murphy. So this cool ass Superman cover, I had to pick that up. Blue Beetle coming to a theater near you uh, soon. Bad Rock with Savage Dragon. Cool Robin cover I found. Night Strike, more image 90s stuff. Wildcats. Found this Saber, I just thought it was a cool cover so I had to pick it up. Bloodpool. Obviously, we're biting off of Rob Liefeld. Well, it's Rob Liefeld biting off of his own creation, Deadpool. It's kind of cool. Witches, another great Snyder and Jock story. And the 10th, uh, Greg Capullo created this guy, actually. I'm meaning to read this over again. We stopped by Hub Comics over in Somerville. And this was a cool five recent issue, number one, for mature readers. I paid $3 for this. And we're going to open this up right now. Oh, wow. So Bitterroot number one, she's a really dope story actually. I stopped collecting this, but I gotta collect this again. Wow. Dark Blood, 
A Thing Called Truth. Ooh, Black Crown. Nice cover. And Beyond Mortal. I recognize Cullen Bunn. Big on his horror stuff. Pickups from Comicopia. It's a cool store in downtown Boston. I picked up Paper Girls number one. I think it's a great show, uh, series and show. Uh, this is by Brian K. Vaughn. Go check out the show, even though they canceled it. It's a really good show. They got The Joker, The Man Who Stopped Laughing, number two. This is the third series. I just thought it was a really dope green embossed cover, kind of paying homage to the 90s covers back in the day. This pickup is from Kamiko uh, Kamikaze. Love that store. So I got Batman Beyond, number one. This is the second series. I thought the cover was amazing, Batman versus Batman. And it's actually signed by Craig Rousseau. Then you have, I got another copy of that Batman 13. I just love that cover. Then this is Invincible number 135, but it's a cool con like combination between Gwen Stacy and Invincible. And it was actually a special edition Diamond Retailer Summit edition. I just picked up this cool CGC. And then the last stop for the day was this cool Little Red Ronin. It's a uh, number one. And it's actually an homage to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Eastman cover. It was obviously a really expensive book, but I just thought it was a really cool cover, so I had to pick it up. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe and make sure to turn on your post notifications. And I hope y'all enjoy the video. Leave in comments if y'all want us to do something different or if you feel we could do something better. But yes. definitely this is all for our fans, our supporters, our customers. Thanks again. And we had a great time in Boston. Yes. Bye, guys.